What was that? There's a new Yo Asobi song out, so we have to talk about it. Hey, I'm Longest Solo Ever. You're watching Longest Solo Ever 2, and today we're going to check out Yusha by Yo Asobi. This is the opening theme to the new anime Freerun. Now, we've already checked out Yo Asobi's last big anime opening theme, Idol, from Oshinoko, and it was obviously amazing, so I have no doubt we're going to love this as well. But first up, if you're not subscribed, hit that button down below for more videos like this one posted every week. Okay, so I've heard approximately like eight seconds of this song already. It came up for me automatically on Spotify because it's a new release and I love Yo Asobi. And as soon as I realized what it was, I was like, oh, no, stop. I have to do this on camera. I need to capture my first impression. So here we are hearing Yo Asobi's Yusha for the first real time. Okay, right off the bat, we have this super cool chord progression, also gorgeous visuals. Oh, I just figured out what's going on here. It took me a second. <laughs> Oh, it's so cool. Okay, let's talk through what's going on here. This is really, really cool. We're in the key of G minor here. So this is like our, our palette of notes to work with, but Ayasi's bringing in this jazz harmony. He's going to be stepping outside of this collection of notes quite a bit. Now, normally we'd have uh, G minor, A diminished, B flat major, C minor, D7, E flat major 7, and then, uh, depending on where we are, probably just like an F chord. And for the first two chords, he sticks to that. We have a, a nice G minor 7. That's just like a, a fancy extension on top of that regular G minor chord. Then we have an F. And then he breaks our rules here. We have an E minor 7 chord here. Now, where does this come from? Well, it doesn't belong anywhere yet. We don't have the information we need to understand where the heck this chord comes from. Let's keep going. After this E minor 7 chord... We have an A minor 7 chord, again, outside our key. There's there's an A diminished here uh, that has different notes in it than it's A minor 7 that Ayasi's playing. But this final chord gives us the clarity. We have a D7, and it's it's technically a D7 sharp 9. We'll talk about that, that last bit in a second. But what's important to talk about here are these last three chords in general. Anytime we start seeing a bunch of out-of-key chords, what we need to do is start looking in a different key. Start looking somewhere else. Now, I've had years and years of music theory training and ear training, and I know from experience that these three chords can only really exist in the key of G major, because G major has these chords. And what we're seeing here are the important ones we're looking for, E minor, A minor, and that D7. So we are borrowing these chords from G major. This is a concept, uh, you, you can call these borrowed chords, and it can also be called mode mixture because we're mixing the minor and major modes within one chord progression. It's a really, really cool way to just expand your chord vocabulary immediately. Just look to the other chords that would be in the other modes in the same like key center you're in. So what's going on in G Dorian, in G Mixolydian, or in this case, G major? Okay, now this thing. I, I said I said before, this is a D7 sharp 9. What does that mean? That means we build a regular D chord to start with. That's D, F sharp, A. D7 is this C. Now, where does that 7 come from? Let's think if we just start from D and count up 7 notes, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So seven just means add on that seventh note to the chord. What do we think nine would mean? Well, let's count. Here's seven, eight, nine. This is a D9 chord. Now, what about D7 sharp nine? Well, we just take that nine and we raise it by a half step. Now it's sharper than it was before. Now, in this specific voicing, I think he's leaving out this fifth, which gives it gives it kind of a more cohesive feel, I find. This is like a very guitar voicing of this. And it just sounds... Here's the regular D7. It sounds fine, but that D7 sharp 9, it's, it's just funky and grungy in this fun way. I love it. Okay. 
I love these telephone vocals in the beginning. We're probably introducing what's going to be a major hook later in the song, or it might not be, but sometimes they'll do that kind of thing. You'll hear me use telephone effects in my songs all the time because it's a great way to build tension without doing anything like crazy complex harmonically or melodically. You are just merely building the tension of your listener having to go, oh wait, what's what's going on in there? I got to listen more closely because they're, they're, they sound so tiny. It's a great way to really draw your listener in and make them focus for a second. I also love that octave layering of vocals. Listen closely on this last line. I love that. That's that's one of my favorite vocal textures. You'll hear me use that all the time in my music. This is a really interesting song texturally. It's not drawing from maybe the usual instrumental vocabulary of Yoasobi stuff that I've heard, which has been, you know, pretty straightforward. I don't want to say straightforward, J-Rock. That's not a thing. That doesn't exist. But, you know, it usually has, like, the piano, the guitar, the bass, the live drums, maybe some EDM drum stuff going on in there. But here we have all these cool samples going on in the background. I just want to, like, take a listen to those. Do you hear these more orchestral sounding drums going on? These big, like trailer kind of drums. These are really cool to use as the basis for your beat. Maybe instead of leaning on like a standard kick sample or something. I really like it. Do you hear those? There's like a mallet thing going on back there. It sounds like maybe a really reverby xylophone or something. I love their transitions. Ayase is so wonderful at moving you from one section to the next with just some beautiful flourish. There we had that nice like piano glissando situation. You know, there was there were those insane synth cutaways in Idol. I love this kind of stuff. We've got a few really cool things going on here. One, we've introduced this new drum beat, and this is one that I definitely haven't heard in a Yoasobi song before. This is a drum beat that I typically associate with maybe some Latin American music. You know, it's got like kind of the reggaeton flair to it. But there's these other rhythmic elements going on, especially in the bass line, that are making this even more interesting. So we've got this drum beat going of, and then the bass line comes in. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh my God. But it's this really cool interaction between those two rhythms that makes this so interesting. Let me just open right up. There's this beautiful kind of glitchy harp just playing these these arpeggiated chords in the background. It's just kind of playing these clusters from the G minor pentatonic scale. And we're just kind of like hitting chunks of that at the same time. We can hear that, right? That bass line's back. Doom, bo -doom, bo -doom, doom, bo -doom. Now we've got this cool melodic figure in the background. As far as the melody goes, like this is this is beautiful melody, just kind of moving around in G minor. You know, we're, this, this feels almost like a, a melodic solo of an instrument. I have yet to hear like a hook for a vocal yet, uh, but I have a feeling as soon as we hit the chorus, they're just going to slap us in the face with it and it'll be incredible, as it always, always is. What was that? <laughs> I am 
always amazed when a composer is able to take something that sounds like like you're hitting random notes on a keyboard and make it sound incredible because it was inevitably every single one of those notes was incredibly carefully chosen and placed. What's important is that at the end of that huge sequence of, of crazy notes is we end up on this note. This is D and it's the five chord in the key of G minor. And that's literally just numbering these chords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This five chord always, always wants to go somewhere. It desperately wants to go back to one, but in this case, we don't. We pull what's called a deceptive cadence. We kind of pull the rug out from under the listener and, and go somewhere just slightly unexpected. So we'd expect this big crazy to want to go back to one, back to G minor, right? But instead, we're going to go up just a little bit, just resolve up a step to the six chord. It's going to sound like this. Take a listen. I, I, uh, what? I feel, I feel like we just stepped on the gas out of nowhere. Like we were taking a nice leisurely cruise down the road and then all of a sudden, boom, a hundred miles an hour. Oh my God. I love this tempo change. This is so cool. There are so, so many interesting things to look at here. One is the fact that the drums don't actually come in until two bars into this section. Listen to them. They're just doing a snare drum roll, just, just building up until that first hit. Check it out. Now the beat's there. And then we have these stops. Batch, 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 batch. This is so cool. I feel like I feel like something about the timbre of these samples has, in a very cool way, almost shifted a little bit retro. It feels a little bit like Super Nintendo or PlayStation era of those like string samples and horn samples. Like these are like some classic Yamaha or Roland keyboards he's using here. It's so cool. Listen to how the drums have shifted to this kind of marching military kind of sound. Bop, brap, brap, that kind of thing. I like that choir in the background, a little bit of like Attack on Titan vibes. I like it. I like it a lot. And now we're back to the beginning. But with more intensity now, these trumpets have come in. We're playing that same beginning. That progression's back, but now we're we've got these horns. We've got this huge, like epic fantasy, like overtone. I like that we've kept this fast tempo now that we introduced it. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of contrast in music, of having a song be kind of like a roller coaster going up and down in intensity, the tension and then release. And Ayase, I feel like listening to an Ayase song is less like a roller coaster and more like a, a, a high speed bumper car chase or something. I don't know. Like in the best way, you are getting just thrown around from intensity level to intensity level through these different keys and harmonic situations. Every Yo Asobi song goes through like the amount of stuff I would put into like eight songs. It gets condensed down into this one. <laughs> Yeah. 
Don't underestimate the power of like a good like wordless vocal hook. That was like the basis of all music in the 2010s was just these hooks without any words to them. And it's great. It works for a reason. It transcends language boundaries. It's just fun and easy to remember. And it's catchy. <laughs> Now we're really back to that beginning groove. The drums came back. Back to that telephone vocal. Drawn in. Here comes the build. Something, oh, something so interesting there. Did you see, like, I was, I didn't know when it was going to happen. I went like this. I was like, yeah, here comes the chorus. But it was another measure. He drew out that section, just an extra measure. This is something that's really, like, dangerous to do as, as a producer, I think. It's something I hear done so often by beginner composers who don't really understand the flow of form and structure in a song. Typically, you're going to want your songs to be built out of, like, eight measure sections or 16 measure sections or maybe four measure sections. But some power of two is usually driving things. And that was like a like a nine measure section or 17 or something. And it caught me off guard. But because I also has this maximalist composition style where I'm already like on edge wondering what he's going to pull next. It caught me off guard, but in a good way. It didn't make me feel uneasy. It made me feel like happy surprised. Let's listen to that again. Just listen for see if you can feel where you think it's going to end and then see how it extends beyond that. We got nine measures there. It was it was unexpected. And then we're back into the chorus, even more excited because we waited a little extra long for it. This is incredible. There was one chord change in the chorus. I have to go back for it. I have to know what was happening there. Okay, so this is this is the Yoasobi anime progression. This is the chord progression from I'm pretty sure this is the chord progression from Racing into the Night. That thing right there, that's like classic. That's classic J-Rock progression. And then normally we would go back. But da 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 Except we don't. We go, uh, this is this is that E-flat major chord. This is the sixth chord in G minor, right? This this belongs here. That's fine. Except we don't play this. We play like a, like an E diminished chord. Where is it, E minor? I don't think it's clear whether this is E diminished or E minor. I, I'm, I'm hearing maybe diminished, but what we're really focused on is this bass line. And what he wants, what Ayase is looking for here out of this chord progression is not the functionality of this chord. It's an excuse to make a bass line that moves in these chromatic steps. Ba, da, da. He could have kept going. Ba, da, da. You know, like anytime you hear chromatic movement in a chord progression, you're going to hear some crazy chords because they're all being used to justify that bass line movement. You can hear it in like any descending progression. Like, if I actually wrote that out, that sounds, like, harmonically, that's a crazy, crazy progression. That's like, G minor, um, D altered over F sharp. This is B flat major over F. This is E half diminished, E flat major 7. Like, like it sounds crazy, but really all it is is play a G minor and make the bottom note go down. That's it. And you get this insanely complex harmonic progression. And so that's what he's doing here. We get this chord. And this interesting harmonic result that comes as a result of this bass motion. Oh, 
choir came back. We moved to this halftime feel. It feels like we're concluding everything we've heard in this song. Like this is the final episode of an anime that was this song. They're wrapping everything up. It's beautiful imagery. I love it. And we're back to that groove. Crazy bass line. Ah, that was amazing. That was so beautiful. As always, I absolutely loved reacting to this song. Go take a listen to the original, watch the whole music video on Yoasobi's channel. I'll link it below. And if there are any songs you'd like me to check out, leave them in the comments down below and we'll take a listen. Of course, subscribe for more videos like this one posted every week. And as always, this video is brought to you by Quick Start Music. If you like hearing me talk about music, be sure to check it out. It's a full collection of online music courses built to help you learn to make music the way you want to. If you use the code LSE at checkout, you'll get 50% off your first month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.